Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to Flying Fids. I'm Juan and this is Pineapple. So for today, we're going to cover egg laying and everything you need to know about egg laying from what causes egg laying to the problems that come along with egg laying and what to do if your bird has laid an egg and how to stop or prevent your birds from laying eggs in the future. So let's get into it because there's a lot of information to cover. So what causes egg laying in birds? In the wild, sexually matured birds, usually between the ages of one to four, will start to lay eggs during mating season, which is from spring to summer because there are certain environmental factors that are going to be present and that will trigger them or influence them into wanting to reproduce. But we could also be providing these same environmental factors that they could experience in the wild right at home. So that's why our birds can start laying eggs as well. So the first environmental factor is longer hours of daylight. So usually if birds are exposed to about 14 to 16 hours, when the sun goes down, we usually turn the lights back on inside. So that's going to make our birds think that the day is longer. The second factor is warmer temperatures and and rain. Our birds are going to be exposed to warm temperatures all year round because even in the winter we have the radiators blasting so we're keeping ourselves warm and usually when it's warmer birds tend to want to shower more often to cool themselves down and also some parrot owners might bring their birds in to shower with them. The third factor is a variety of healthy foods that are readily available to your birds. Usually warm and mushy foods which will stimulate regurgitated food from mates and also foods that they would feed to their offspring. At home we feed our birds nutritious foods and most of the time it's just readily available to them or we just place it in bowls so they can eat out of it. So when we do that they're actually not working for their food just like they would in the wild and because of the warmer temperatures and rainy weather in the wild birds will instinctually know that there's going to be a lot of food available so that's what we're kind of stimulating when we just feed them all these different nutritious foods and they know that it's available to them all the time. Fourth factor is if they have been sexually stimulated whether it's by you, another bird, and even inanimate objects objects like their favorite toy. And the way that you could be sexually stimulating them is if you pet them on their backs, their tails, also their bellies, and underneath their wings. So you really shouldn't be petting them there because you're going to send them the wrong signals. The only place you should ever be petting your bird is on their heads and their necks. That way you're letting them know, hey friend, uh, looks like you got a pin feather over there. So uh, I'm gonna help you get it real quick. Instead of, hey girl. It's sexy time. And you can usually tell when your birds are sexually aroused if they have their tails raised and they're fluttering their wings and they're also making sounds. And the fifth factor is dark enclosed spaces where they could form or build their nest. Also, if your bird has a happy hut or a box in their cage, they could also associate that as their nesting site. Now, this could also be their cage. And if you haven't been moving their perches, toys, or food bowls around, and if the location of their cage has been in the same spot for a while, it's really important to not stimulate your birds into laying eggs because there are a bunch of problems that come with egg laying. So I'm gonna mention five problems because I think these are the most significant problems and one of them you probably have heard about but the first one is osteoporosis. Laying eggs takes a lot of energy out of your birds and birds actually use the calcium from their bones to form those eggshells that will make their bones become a lot weaker and fragile and they'll also be more prone to fractures because their bones are so brittle. And the second problem is egg binding. Birds that are more prone to egg binding include cockatiels, lovebirds, and budgies. If you're unfamiliar with egg binding that's when birds can't properly push out the eggs because the egg shell is either deformed or if it has a soft shell and also if it's too large so it is going to get stuck in their bodies. In order for your birds not to get egg bound, birds will need to be in optimal condition in order for them to lay eggs so they would need to be on a proper diet of pellets, fruits, and veggies. That way they're getting enough nutrients so that they can form a properly sized egg and also they need to be getting enough exercise so that they have muscle tone in order for them to be able to push out the egg. Overweight birds and clipped birds might not be getting proper exercise through flight so they could be more prone to being egg bound. Now signs of egg binding could include if they're open beak panting and also if they have a wide stance not pooping as often if there's blood on their vent and if it looks like they're straining to push the egg out. Birds can also die from egg binding and it's not recommended to try and massage the egg out yourself if your bird is egg bound so you should really take your bird to the vet right away if you can so that they can assess the situation and see if they need to either massage the egg out or insert a needle through their vent so that they could suck out 
out the egg contents and then your birds will then be able to poop out or push out the eggshell. The third problem with egg laying is egg yolk peritonitis. It's also known as egg peritonitis and it's more common in cockatiels, budgies, lovebirds, and macaws. So usually when a bird goes through ovulation, the egg yolk will be released from their ovary and then it will travel to the oviduct. That's where the egg is formed. So instead of the yolk traveling to the oviduct, an egg yolk peritonitis is going to travel to the bird's abdominal cavity instead. And when that happens, your bird is going to have trouble breathing and their bellies are going to swell up. The causes for egg yolk peritonitis is if it's genetic and also if the oviduct was ruptured or if your bird was restrained while it was ovulating. Now the symptoms are really similar to egg binding, but one thing you'll notice is that your birds are going to have loss of appetite and they're going to lose weight. They're also going to be straining a lot and it's gonna look like they're trying to lay an egg but nothing's going to come out. Birds could also die from this if they're not treated right away, so it's really important if you ever notice these signs in your birds that you take them to the vet ASAP. For chronic egg layers, they can suffer from prolapse of their cloaca or basically the passage from where poop and pee comes out and it's going to stick out and protrude out of their bodies. I am going to insert an image just so you get an idea of what it looks like. So if you don't want to look or if you're a little screamish of graphic images, skip ahead a few seconds. So I'm going to insert it right now and it looks like this. And the reason why this could happen is because for chronic egg layers, if they're constantly pushing out an egg, it's going to put a lot of strain on their vents and their cloacas in order for them to push out the egg. So to fix the prolapse, you would have to take your bird to the vet so that they could assess the situation and then they might put in a few sutures in order to stick the cloaca back into the right place and keep it from coming out again. The last problem is called hyperlipidemia and it's going to be more common in chronic egg layers like cockatiels, budgies, lovebirds, and some small to medium conures. Hyperlipidemia is when there are high levels of fats and proteins circulating throughout your bird's bloodstream. And birds will usually have these high levels of fats and proteins in order for them to be able to create the egg. Your bird's blood could actually thicken and it could cause them to have a stroke so they could actually die from this. So these were the five problems that I really wanted to mention just so you know how important it really is to make sure that you discourage egg laying. So let's say that you did everything you possibly could to discourage egg laying in your birds or maybe you weren't aware that you could trigger your birds to lay eggs. So how exactly would you know if your birds are about to lay eggs? Now the first thing that you could probably notice is any behavioral changes. So your birds could either be more affectionate towards you or someone else that they see as their mates. They could also be a little bit more defensive of their cage or their nesting site. So maybe you're reaching into their cage and then you suddenly see that they're lunging towards you to attack. One obvious sign is if they've actively built a nest either with shredded toys in their cage or newspaper from the bottom of the tray. They could also be spending more time in their cages or wherever they plan to lay their eggs and if they normally poop in the cage and now they're not and also if they have larger poops than normal. Some birds will actively start eating more calcium so it could be a cuddle bone that you have in their cage, maybe a calcium perch or a calcium block. Now for physical changes you could notice that they have gained a lot of weight and I mean a lot. So if you follow me on Instagram you probably know that Pumpkin laid an egg about a few weeks ago and one of the first signs that I noticed was that she gained a lot of weight. So normally she's about 80 grams and that's kind of thick for a green cheek. We usually weigh her a couple times a week and one day we weighed her she was about 80 grams and then like a few days later she was about 106 grams for a green cheek conure. Another physical sign is if you actually look at their vent and you see that they have what is called egg butts. I'm going to insert a video of what pumpkin's vent looked like when she was about to lay an egg. If you look at this you can see that she's kind of missing a few feathers near her vent area and you can kind of see that there's an egg shape forming there. If you notice any of these changes in your birds you probably want to know what to do when your bird lays an egg and how to prevent them from laying an egg in the future. So before I tell you what you should do let me know in the comments down below if your bird has laid an egg this year and let me know if you were freaked out like I was. So if your bird has recently laid an egg then now's a perfect time to disrupt their laying cycle. Let's start with what you should do. So if you're not already doing this then you want to start weighing your birds daily just so you can keep track of their weight and it's also a good way to tell how many eggs that they're expecting to lay. If your bird already laid an egg so what you could do is when your bird's not looking and when your bird's not nesting on them you want to take the egg real quick and put it on a scale to weigh it and then do the math and then you could see how many eggs that your birds can lay. You want to give them more hours of uninterrupted sleep in the dark so 14 hours is a good number. If your bird is nesting more often and she's not moving from her eggs you also want to make sure that she's eating and that she's getting all those nutrients back into her body that she probably has lost. You want to help her out a bit and try to hand feed her fresh foods like her fruits and her veggies and you could also try to get her 
her to start foraging for her seeds and her pellets. I'll definitely make a video on how to teach your birds to forage as well. Also, if you see that she's not going for her cuddle bone or her calcium perch or block, you definitely want to scrape some of that calcium over her food so that she's intaking calcium to replace the calcium that she has lost. Also want to make sure that your bird is getting natural sunlight so that she's able to absorb that calcium. You should start gently disrupting their nesting area. So if it's their cage, you want to start moving their perches, food bowls, and toys around and move their cage to another location just so that it gives them the idea of, hey, this, this nest is changing a lot, so maybe right now is not a good time to lay an egg. One really important thing that you should do is remove any sexual stimulation. So if it's another bird that has been sexually stimulating them, you want to put them in another cage for a little bit so that they, they don't continue to sexually frustrate them. And also, if you're the one that has been stimulating your bird, you want to start petting them only on their heads and their necks. And at this time, you should also not handle them as often because they are really fragile. But what you should be doing is take them out of their cage or their nesting area a couple times a day so that you could help them get some light exercise because if they're sitting on their nest all day, it could mean that they could start losing muscle mass because they're not exercising as often. And you should also take them out to poop once in a while because birds tend not to poop in their nesting area. And the last thing that you should do is line the bottom of the cage with a soft towel so that the eggs won't break and that your birds will be comfortable nesting on the eggs. What you don't want to do, and it's really important, and that is to not remove the eggs because if you remove the eggs, it is going to make them want to lay more eggs until they're satisfied with how many eggs that they have or when they're satisfied with their clutch. What you can do is buy fake eggs that are the right size for your birds and every other day add one egg to their nest until their clutch is complete. That way it'll let your birds know that, hey, I have enough eggs, so maybe I should stop laying now. Now you probably want to know what to do after they've laid their eggs. So the first thing that you should do is leave the eggs in their nest and let them have the option of nesting on them. Some birds will want to nest on them and then some birds won't, but you definitely don't want to remove the eggs. You want to leave the eggs in their nest for a few weeks until you see that they're becoming a little less interested in nesting. After a few weeks have gone by and you see that they're not as interested, you want to slowly remove the eggs. So you want to take one egg out every other day. That way it'll let your birds know that the eggs aren't viable and that they won't be able to hatch. Now, if you know for a fact that your bird has mated with a male bird and that there is a possibility that those eggs could hatch, I really don't recommend that you raise those birds unless you're an experienced breeder because raising baby birds is a lot of hard work and it could cause a dent in your wallet. So what you want to do is either boil the eggs or freeze them for 24 hours and then place those eggs back into their nest. Another thing that you want to do is make sure that you leave the cage door opened. That way you give your bird the option of wanting to come out when she wants. The last thing that you should do is schedule an appointment with your vet just so they can give her a thorough checkup and make sure that she is healthy. You can either take her while she's laying her eggs or after she's done laying her eggs. So your vet might offer to give your birds a Lupron injection and what that is is a hormone injection. It's kind of like birth control just to prevent her from laying eggs again after this clutch. It's entirely up to you. So you could think about getting the Lupron injection for your birds just to be safe and on top of that changing up their environment and getting rid of anything that could cause her to lay eggs in the first place. And your vet may also want to send you home with an additional calcium supplement just so that your bird can get enough calcium to build up those strong bones again. And also if your birds are not sexually dimorphic or if you can't tell their gender just by looking at them, I highly recommend that you get a DNA test just so you know for sure and that if your bird happens to be female then you could start preparing yourself if she does lay an egg and you could try to deter her from laying eggs to begin with. Let me know in the comment section below if you found this video helpful and if it has helped you prepare yourselves if you think your bird is about to lay an egg or if your bird will lay an egg in the future. Also let me know if you do anything else to deter your birds from laying eggs or something that I haven't mentioned in this video just so everyone else can take a look as well. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell and select all notifications so you get notified every time we post a new video. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.